get started. So thank you all again for joining us for today's Appraisal Buzz webinar sponsored by Astroom, Fannie Mae Acceptance and Property Data Review and Outlook for 2024. We've got some great speakers today. We have Justin Alexander, the Director of Collateral Strategy and Innovation with Fannie Mae. We have Carl Tra Travesky, the Senior Vice President, Director of Sales at, and Operations at Mutual of Omaha. We have Eric Sai, the co-founder and CEO of Astrum, and we have Carrie Ann Brown, the Vice President of Client Services at Value Trust. I'm going to hand it over to Justin and let him get started. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Justin Alexander. I'm Director of Collateral Strategy and Innovation for Fannie Mae. I've uh, been with Fannie Mae for about four years now. Uh, prior to Fannie Mae, I, I worked at CoreLogic. I worked at First American, and then I worked at a couple of uh, large national lenders. Uh, before that, I was a fee appraiser. I was out in the field uh, as an appraiser for 13 years in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I've been in the collateral uh, valuation uh, appraisal space for about 23 years now. Um, before we move on into the next slide here, I've got to go through a Fannie Mae disclaimer. So I've made every effort to, uh, you know, what I say today it should align with our selling guide, but if I veer off from that, our selling guide ultimately trumps uh, anything that I'm going to say. So just going to tee up the conversation real quick. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, our newest valuation option, which is value acceptance plus property data. But before we jump into that, I wanted to provide a little context here. So we've been on this continuous, uh, this journey of continuous improvement to modernize the valuation process to make it more efficient. Um, historically, we've had two options for all loans. Um, the, the far left option that you see there called value acceptance. We've rebranded uh, our appraisal waiver to be called value acceptance. We had the, the far left option and then the far right option, which is the traditional appraisal. Uh, we have felt for a long time that there are loans that don't quite meet the, the risk threshold uh, to qualify for the full value acceptance or the full waiver, uh, but don't necessarily meet the the need for a full traditional appraisal either. So we've created options uh, in between those. And, and what, we're, what we're gearing towards is being able to match the risk of the loan with a, with a particular uh, valuation option. Uh, so moving uh, the second option from the left is value acceptance plus property data. We're gonna spend most of our time today talking about that. What that is, is we're offering um, a value acceptance. We're accepting the lender's estimate of value um, on a refinance transaction or a contract price on a purchase transaction contingent upon a successful delivery of a property data collection to our API. So we've got a standardized set of property data that we've been testing uh, for the last six years. Uh, the lender would procure the property data collection through, a, through an approved vendor and that would be delivered to our API. And at that point, the the, uh, the valuation process for that particular loan would be complete. Uh, moving across hybrid, uh, we, we do have a very limited hybrid uh, offering as part of our value acceptance plus property data offering. And those, those happen, it's very limited scope. Uh, where, those, where those could potentially happen would be where we make the value acceptance plus property data offer to the lender through DU. Um, the lender goes and procures a property data collection and then for some reason or another, changes some credit characteristics uh, in the loan profile in, in DU, changes LTV, loan amount, things like that, that would cause them to lose that value acceptance plus property data offer. Since they've already procured that property data collection, we don't want them to have to send a property or send someone, uh, someone else back out to the property to do an inspection. So uh, for, for very limited scenarios, we would allow a hybrid appraisal to be completed. Um, using that property data collection. Uh, staying on hybrid, we have been testing a hybrid, uh, a broader hybrid offering uh, for the last five plus years in pilot. Uh, this is where third party data collection happens uh, using that uh, property data collection standardized format. And then an appraiser would complete the hybrid appraisal using that property data collection. Uh, we do expect that that option to be rolled out. Uh, or we're hopeful that that'll be rolled out uh, next year um, to be more broadly available. Our desktop option moving moving to the right uh, was uh, has been a part of our policy since 2022. We continue to see desktop appraisals come through, albeit small volume. We do see those coming through, but but our our hope is that you know 
once we get the hybrid, the broad hybrid offering out, that we have this full spectrum of options that we can offer lenders uh, through DU. And then, of course, on the far right hand side, you all know what the traditional uh, appraisal is. Eric, I'll pass it off to you. Thanks, Justin. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Eric Tsai, CEO and co founder here at Astroom. For those who are not familiar with me and Astroom, um, we are a property data collection company to support Fannie Mae's PDC, um, property data and property mail acceptance plus property data. Um, I started a company in 2018. Um, before that, I was working at Silicon Valley. Um, I was a data scientist for Facebook. At first, um, Astrum started off as like a pure software company uh, to help real estate agents create a 3D scan, like the one you see in the background, straight from their mobile device without needing to purchase uh, additional 3D camera that could cost thousands of dollars. Um, always needed besides a mobile device is uh, our proprietary tripod, uh, which, as you can see, it can be um, it can be purchased on Amazon for about hundred dollars. During the past uh, couple of years, when US was going through the development of COVID nineteen, um, we partnered with MLSs and Realtor.com and Zillow to bring open houses online. And as a result, we brought on about thirty thousand real estate agents onto our platform. In twenty twenty two. Uh, we recruited uh, 5,000 um, among the, the data, uh, 5,000 of the real estate agent to be our data collector to support the newly issued uh, GSE inspection base waivers. <clears throat> so what's what's unique about our uh, property data collection service is that 90% of our panels are state licensed real estate agents. And for every property we inspect, we create a 3D scan um, for, um, for that, for the report. And the advantage of a 3D scan is to allow a very robust QC process done by our internal QC team and also by uh, the AMC's QC team that we work with. Um, our reviewer can virtually walk through the property um, to make sure all features, upgrade, and damages are properly documented so nothing is missed. And the property data collector rarely have to return to the property, which would cause delay in the process and most importantly, inconvenience to the borrower. Um, towards the end of this discussion, I'll give a short um, demo of our QC tool to show you how we are leveraging the latest uh, scanning technology in completing uh, the PDCs. But today we work with about 80 AMCs and lenders across the country, such as Value Trust, which is our valuable partner to help extend our service offering to Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. I'll kick now pass it to uh, Carrie Ann uh, for her to introduce herself in Value Trust. Hello, I am happy to be with you all today. As Eric said, my name is Carrie Ann Brown and I'm Vice President of Client Services here at Value Trust Solutions. Um, I've been with Value Trust for about 12 years now um, and excited about the way this industry continues to evolve. Um, we are a nationwide AMC and we are consistently looking at how we can partner um, with our lenders to keep the process as streamlined as possible while also supporting our clients' risk tolerances. So as Justin had pointed out, there's always just this really um, delicate balance of trying to be as quick and efficient as possible, yet also ensuring that um, the clients have full confidence in the product that they're delivering back um, and meets their risk tolerances as, as well. So um, as, as we started to really look at appraisal modernization um, and what this could mean um, for our lenders, as well as the appraisal world, um, what we really started to think about is um, that experience that I think most of us on this call have um, experienced, which was that saturation of volume um, for several years. There were wonderful things um, that came from that. But one of the drawbacks was that we did find a bottleneck where um, despite how hard appraisers worked, working seven days a week, um, working tirelessly, um, there just wasn't enough to keep up with the immense amount of volume um, of the appraisals that came. So um, although our market has shifted drastically, as again, you all know, uh, this is really an opportunity for us to look at the ways we can meet client and investor requirements with an expanded workforce. Um, also allowing those additional resources to help us meet those loan requirements. Um, we as a company uh, have been early adopters of the Fannie's PDC. And as Eric said, chose to form um, a strategic partnership 
with Ostrom. One of the things um, I would say, and I know Eric just told you a little bit about their company, but um, what we were really looking for was uh, the expectations that we have um, for our clients uh, to ensure that we have professionalism, communication, um, and quality, and that we're aligning with what they need. And we felt like that partnership with Astroom would allow us to provide that, um, you know, for our clients. So I'm looking forward to the discussion today. Uh, I know that we've got people from all, all parts of the process um, that are involved in this. So just getting perspectives, um, how all of us have experienced it thus far, and then um, what we are looking to um, towards the future. So I am going to pass it off to Carl. Carl um, is one of our wonderful clients at Mutual of Omaha, and I um, hand it over to you. Glad to be with you all today. Thank you, Carrie Ann. My name is Carl Trzewski. I'm Senior Vice President, Director of Sales Operations for Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. I've uh, been in the business. Um, I'm creeping up on 25 years, so I'm kind of dating myself. Um, with Mutual of Omaha Mortgage, we've been uh, intact here for about four to five years. Uh, I'm on the executive staff, but my executive staff, we've been together for almost 20 years. So a seasoned crew, we've been together for a long, long time. Um, and as Carrie Ann said, we also have been early adopters of the Fannie Mae Property Data Collection, the PDC reports, um, almost immediately as soon as it came out. Uh, and can I tell you how often we use it? I mean, any chance that we get, just like when the PIWs came out, it's a it's an opportunity for us uh, to essentially help our clients, uh, speed, efficiency, cost. Um, so we were very, very early adopters on that. And as far as the the value trust um, ad and the Astro Room, their expertise in this product uh, has been invaluable to us, and also our friends at Fannie Mae. Uh, you know discussing the the procedures with them discussing the product with them so value trust has been a big huge partner of ours for almost 15 years and their information provided from their uh, kind of from their world on what the pdcs look like you know the accuracy of them and so on and so forth that information has been invaluable so we can create our policies and procedures on using uh the pc reports but we use it again any chance we get uh, and, you know, hopefully we can discuss that a little bit more and answer some of those questions for you guys. Thank you. So, Carl, um, what do you think the biggest advantage for the inspection based waiver is to lenders? Like you, you mentioned, you use it whenever you get a chance. Yeah, the, the first advantage you're going to see is the speed in getting the reports uh, and the cost. If all of us remember the last two years where it was a little bit crazy in the uh, appraisal world, uh, costs were all over the place, uh, increase uh, appraisal fees in certain areas. So if you look at the average cost, and I don't have that information, Mayor Carrie Ann does, the average cost of an appraisal, and you compare that to a PDC report, it's going to be night and day. Uh, and it's going to help you in a leg up when fees are only increasing uh, and borrowers are constantly, constantly shopping. The other important factor of the PDC in, in our world is the fact that the value is established. We don't have to worry about that. Um, and it's something that we don't have to go back with when you're looking at an appraisal where it could be subjective. Uh, the value is established. We can move on from that because the very first hump when you're originating and looking at uh, files is not only the income and assets and things like that, but it's the value of the property because collateral is king in our world. And having that established up front is one less hurdle we have to worry about. Thank you, Carl. Carrie Ann, um, Carl mentioned costs and turn time are really important to lenders. From the ANC standpoint, do you mind sharing some data on the, you know, on the average cost to the borrowers and turn time for the for the PDC versus um, full appraisal? Sure. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the turn times right now, uh, I think everybody is is aware then with the volume down, we're getting pretty quick appraisal turnarounds as well as these PDC turnarounds. So at this point in the market, you're not gonna see giant difference, differences between the two. Um, now you will, on average, we're gonna be at about three days um, with a PDC. Um, 
you know, we are still reliant on an access contact um, at the borrowers to let the data collector in. So they have to find an agreeable time. Um, but those those are those are looking on average um, around three business days. Um, when you look at appraisals, right now you're going to be on average around four. We all know different parts of the country look different ways. Um, but what we do know about this is, as Carl said, we in the past several years have experienced just an extreme, immense amount of volume that came through that made it very clear um, that we didn't have the amount of appraisers in the field to cover the amount of volume. So what I foresee with the, the modernization products with this PDC um, is that as the market becomes more favorable, as we see more volume coming through, that's we're going to extend. We're going to allow that, um, you know, that PDC to offer continued lower turn times than you see when the volume starts to go up, and therefore those turn times start to go up with appraisals. Um, as far as cost goes, I know you asked that as well, Eric. Um, you're it's a it's a pretty um, sizable difference. On average, you're going to see about two hundred and fifty dollars for uh, a um, PDC, um, depending upon the area of the country that you're in for an appraisal, on average, you're going to be at about 500 to 525. Um, so a very big, big difference there from a cost perspective. So 50% reduction on um, about on average. But what if what if the hybrid, or sorry, what if the waiver is escalated to hybrid, right? We like Justin mentioned that, you know, there's some exceptions. Um, but in, in case that happens, do the borrowers actually have to pay more than they normally would for traditional appraisals? Because at this point, not only they have to pay for the inspection company, um, they also had to pay for uh, the appraisal to the appraiser. Um, can you comment on that? And how often does this happen? Sure. Yeah, great question. I think it's a concern for a lot of people. Um, in our experience, we have not had a single um PDC turned to a hybrid yet. Um, I think Justin had shared some um, data specifically with me as we were speaking that that the whole point that Fanny tried to set out with this was that it would be very rarely needed. Um, so the intention is always that that PD, PDC is going to going to get you what you need. Um, with that said, if the um, instance came up where that was needed and a hybrid was required. Um, Viatrist has always prided themselves with working with their clients, making sure things are reasonably priced. Um, we anticipate um, that they would still be able to get their um, full, full um, hybrid and data collection at the cost of an appraisal or around there. Um, again, we work with our clients a lot to, to make um, fees that work well for them. Um, and work well for the type of business they do. And, and we would continue to do that with this product. With that said, again, we haven't had a single hybrid yet, so that hasn't come into play. Got it. So it's 250 or, you know, cap at $500. So at most, it will be the same as traditional appraisal, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah on average. Like I said, it's different. The appraisal costs are different throughout the country. But yes, you're 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 going to stay pretty close in line um, with that if and when that that happens. So if you know, like Carl said, right, your value acceptance plus proper data is so impactful um, in terms of speed, quality, and having values established. Carrie, Ann, what? Why do you think there are still many lenders standing on the sideline? You know, have not yet adopt uh, has have not yet adopt this product. Curious to see, like you know, from the agency standpoint, like if you can share it with the audience. The, the feedback you have gathered from um, from lenders from around the timing of adoption, and you know, what kind of education do you think they need for them to feel comfortable with this product? Sure, um, I think I this this kind of webinar is a really great opportunity to get some of that information out there. Um, Adoption is always hard in this industry. I know um, Justin had mentioned when they put the waivers out, it took a really long time for lenders to feel comfortable with that. I'm not a lender, but in my experience with them, um, you know, you hear things like the policies that they have to update in order um, to 
to make sure that they can utilize these, um, where underwriting uh, requirements fall. Like what is what is our requirement? And this feels scary and it's a change. Um, you know, I think even hearing like with this, this is a the perception of someone other than an appraiser um, completing one of these reports causes some of them to have fear. So I think there's a handful of things um, that different clients, you know, just aren't quite sure of. It's new. Um, and you've got people and clients like Carl that are early adopters and jump in and love it. And it's great for their business. Um, but others who are a little more hesitant, those risk tolerances sit a little bit higher um, and they'll need to, you know, to get more information on that and feel a little bit more comfortable with that. And hoping things like this help that to see that it, it really is an, an effective tool um, it's been working really well for people. So thank you. So Carl, um, you know, you mentioned that you you guys have been an early adopter and uh, Astrum and Value Trust, we have been doing inspection based waiver for you as, I, as, as far as I remember for quite some time. Um, do you mind sharing with a group um, how Mutual of Omaha was able to jump on so quickly on adoption? First thing is, is the partnership uh, with the AMC. Uh, and our partners at Fannie Mae. Uh, we would have extensive conversations with Fannie Mae about the product, uh, you know, any of the restrictions we need to worry about, uh, any of the outliers that you might see, ones that pop up with repair and things like that. You know, sometimes sitting down and talking with your partners helps you formulate your policies and procedures. Uh, Value Trust was super important in that process, Carrie Ann and her team. Uh, giving us information from a appraiser's aspect. And then Fannie Mae, from an agency aspect, that we kind of meld that together. And as an executive staff, we sat down and we just looked at the pros and the cons. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll bring it back to my, my thought before. The idea of it is, is, is removing the speculation on value, uh, which is the most important key, okay? Why some lenders aren't using the pro, this was asked to me before, why lenders aren't using this. I, I really couldn't even answer that question intelligently. Uh, I know some fear the policies and procedures of the repercussions of using it and not getting it back, but that's your comfortability level when you're talking with Fannie Mae, uh, your partners at Fannie Mae, and it, you know, saying, hey, are you guys gonna repurchase these loans? What's going on, you know? Um, and that's where you have to get that comfortability level. But when you're looking at the reports and the data that's already out there, because at the end of the day, Fannie Mae, an agency buying loans, they're also a data collection company too. They, they, you guys collect a ton of data and you have a lot of powerful tools to zero in and hone that data. That's how we started getting PIWs. And what's the next logical step after a PIW? The PDC, which makes sense to me. So, you know, and then using the income and asset waivers and things like that, we, we see where the business is heading to and that's where we wanna become early adopters. So we, we're not left in the dust uh, and losing clients. Great. So Justin, let's talk about, you know, like the underwriting process uh, a little bit. Um, can you tell us more, like, you know, what happened if the lenders, you know, looks at the PDC and, you know, finds it, you know, to be inaccurate or incomplete? Well, lenders always uh, have to look for, ask for revisions or send the data collected back to the property for missing photos, or do you think they can still proceed with the loan? Well, the way we have it set up through our API, uh, incomplete is not a is not a factor because it has to be complete. All the data fields must be present. All the photos must be present for it to come through our API. As far as inaccuracy, I mean, we it's very similar to the traditional appraisal. I mean, a lender is responsible for delivering accurate information to us, uh, even though they run that appraisal through collateral underwriter and get a, a you know a two point five or below score. Where we, where we issue value rep and warrant relief, they're still responsible for delivering accurate data in that appraisal. They cannot uh, deliver a loan to us um, that's you know 1,500 square foot house and the appraisal is saying it's 3,000 square feet. They need to reconcile that with the appraiser and get accurate information. The same thing applies with the PDC. Um, if as lenders are going through that property data collection, reviewing photos, reviewing the data, if, if it appears there's material misrepresentations, then it should be reconciled uh, before it comes to us and they would be responsible for that. So, so it's very similar to traditional appraisal in terms of underwriting. Can you, is there any difference 
Like, can you talk about the help the audience understand what the difference would be? Um, the biggest difference from a lender perspective is that on that you know with the PDC they're not uh, dealing with the value, so it's I would say it's less complex. Uh, really, with the property data collection, it's going through uh, part of part of our data standard is a very robust set of photos. I would argue that it includes more photos than any appraisal that I've ever completed. So we have we included all of, all of those photos so that uh, a lender or underwriter reviewer can go through and reconcile in those photos what they're seeing in the data. And if it appears that there's things that are misrepresented, uh, that's not accurate in the data, then they would need to get those uh, reconciled and completed before it uh, comes to us. Got it. So photos are very important. Um, what are some tools uh, lenders can use to QC um, the data and the photos? Oh, well, there's all, I mean, all the tools that they use today to review appraisals, uh, county county websites, Google Earth. Uh, we do have a, uh, a tool that we make available to um, any AMC, uh, any, any lender. It's called PDART. It's our property data API review tool. And it takes that digital uh, property data collection and puts it in a visible UI, so a viewable UI on the screen so that someone can go through and review all of the data, all of the photos. So that's certainly something that's available, but uh, just numerous online tools that, um, you know, MLS um, uh, tools like that would certainly be used. So a lot of property data collection company, including Astroom, we provide a PDF um, because we heard that lenders are used to read PDFs. Is that, you know, is that acceptable or, you know, like, or do you usually prefer them to log on to PDAR and use the, the web version to, to go through the photos? We don't have any preference. Um, as long as they can get comfortable with the data that's included in the property data collection and they think that it's accurate, it's, it's, the data is consistent with what they're seeing in the photos. Um, that would be that would be fine. Does Fannie Mae QC the report as well? If so, like what does Fannie Mae look for? We do since this is a new um, since this is a new process for the industry. Uh, we we feel obligated to help the industry kind of mature this process. So we have uh, internal teams dedicated to reviewing property data collections as they come in. I would tell you kind of some inside baseball that 100% of any new vendor uh, that starts doing property data collection, we review 100% of those property data collections. And we're looking at the same things that we would expect a lender or, or QC reviewer to look at. We're looking at the photos, we're looking at the data and we score the vendors and we provide feedback to those vendors uh, where we're seeing misrepres misrepresentations, where we're seeing issues. Once we, feel like the vendor is a, meets a certain threshold and then we, we would pass them off to kind of our normal LQC process. But we we feel very strongly that we we want to help the industry mature this. And I, I would just tell you that we we have um, hundreds of thousands of property data collections and we have reviewed them. Um, we have compared them every which way possible uh, to a prior appraisal. And the data that we see coming through on property data collections is very consistent to what we see coming through on appraisals, um, with the exception of one thing. And that was early on, we did see property data collectors that had an issue measuring the home and, and coming up with the accurate GLA. Um, that's, it's just challenging. It's, it's difficult to train people to do that like appraisers do it. Um, but we've seen the emergence of technology, uh, 3D scan technology, a machine generated floor plan technology that's really filled that gap. Um, and, and so, you know, Today, the, the GLA and the floor plans that we've seen coming through are, are consistent with what we see in prior appraisals. Cool. Thank you. I think this is um, a good time for me to give a quick, a quick demo of, um, of our uh, 3D scanning technology and how we're using it to, um, to ensure the data is accurate. So. I'm pulling out one of our uh, one, one, one of the assignments we did, and the data collector says, uh, nothing notable for view type. So if I was a QC person, um, I would go into the 3D scan and well, I'm pulling this out. Um, so you can see, it basically this is a 3D dollhouse of this, this property we inspected. 
right? So I can go into the front yard and see what exactly is here. Um, you can see there's there's a little bit of view uh, down there. Is you know a little bit of city skyline, even though not very obvious. But I'll take a note here and take a photo. And then on the right side, I also noticed that there's a power line, um, which was not reported. Um, and I'll take a photo here as well. And now I go to the backyard. And then you can see that you know, there is like a, like a forest in the back, right? So this is sort of a view as well, right? So if, if I don't have the scan, right, we'll have to send a data collector to go back and have them to um, you know, trouble the bar again to get access to their backyard. Um, but with the scan, um, then you can do a lot, a lot of these in the back office, right? I can select power line, I can select city skyline, I can select um, woods, and then I can just upload the photo that we just, we just took. Okay, so this one is... And then only that, you know, we can um, select the quality of the view, right? Unobstructed, this is partial, and this is um, obstructed. And then you can, it's asking if anyone wants us to rank it. So you can actually rank, rank it by dragging it like that. So that's a quick demo um, of what Astrum can do um, uh, using the DSNA technology to QC this report. So we never really had to send um, the data collected back. Um, so uh, I, we have a little bit of time left. So I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the eligibility. So Justin, uh, once Lender reviewed the PDC, that I think the next step is to ensuring the property uh, meets uh, the P meets the eligibility of Fannie Mae's. Can you talk to us more about that? You know, like once they look at the data, they ensure the data is accurate. Um, what's next? Yeah, so um, I mean, there's there's certain eligibility requirements that that would be um, kind of filtered out at the point of DU submission. So we're not going to make the value acceptance plus property data offer on a condo, or there's a number of different property types that we don't we don't offer this on yet. Um, so those wouldn't you know those shouldn't be an issue. But if 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 uh, you know you you've got a single family uh, loan and you're getting a property data collection that comes back. It's a multifamily property or it's a, a condo, you know, that's not eligible. So you would at that point in time need to, um, you know, you would need to go a different, different path and correct that, uh, you know, loan submission in DU, which would then give you the proper offer for you to go fulfill. Um, so, you know, the biggest, the biggest thing on the data collection is making sure that it's, it's accurate. Um, and making sure the property condition is, you know, consistent with what, um, you know, is is in the in the pro in the PDC, uh, and that the property is not a C six. We don't we don't buy. Uh, you can't deliver a loan that's in C six condition. So can they rely on the API response? Because um, if we send the data to them uh, to the Fannie Mae API, there will be a response, and they is the response pretty good in terms of telling the lenders like what to do next on and, and also eligibility wise. We have informational alerts today that fire back through the API. Uh, we're working on, you know, refining those and, and making those more valuable to whoever is submitting um, the property data collection. I think there's you know, our future state is going to be more like a CU type uh, tool that that helps review and points out, uh, you know, issues to look at in the property data collection. So there will be an API response, uh, and we're going to continue to iterate on that. Great, thanks, Justin. Um, before we open the the the, the room up for questions, do you mind sharing uh, a little bit with the audience what they can expect uh, for the future of appraisal modernization in twenty twenty four? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we've been testing the the broad broader hybrid program, and we hope to be able to roll that out. And there's some things that we want to continue to test uh, throughout the the end of this year, first part of twenty twenty four, and then. Our hope is that we could roll that uh, out more broadly. Um, you know, I think you're going to see, you know, UAD is right around the corner. So that's the new UAD is going to launch in 2025. Uh, we do have the new UPD, which uniform, uh, uniform property data set. Uh, we partnered with um, Freddie Mac to align our data standards. Uh, so that will be launching 
uh, December 1st of this year. Uh, so that property data collection that, that we uh, that we're talking about here today that you have to go get, we're now aligned. Freddie has has been testing and using their own proprietary set. We've been using our own set. We are aligning uh, that data set, and we think that that's even going to uh, produce a, be a better property data collection. But you know, I think um, things like 3D scan, uh, image recognition is going to play you know a big role in the future evaluation. I think some of these uh, machine generated floor plan technologies that we've seen are going to, you know, uh, play a big role. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to, you know, uh, see where we can expand on these appraisal alternatives. Um, and, you know, that's kind of our game plan. Cool. That's great. Thanks, Justin. Um, now, let's uh, do some QMAs. Um, I will take the first one. Um, I see that there is one coming in. Uh, the question is, it's my understanding that all of these companies, Astroroom and AMCs, um, are overwhelmingly using realtors and others for data collection and not appraisers. Is that true? Actually, that's not true at all. Um, you know, we, we do have um, part of our panel um, are appraisers who apply to be the data collectors. The reason that we have um, a lot of real estate agents on our panel really just because when we started this company, we built tools for real estate agents, right? The, 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 the app for them to create 3D scans and post on MLSs. And we have a database of them. So we just started there. Um, and But over the time, as we do the, more of these webinars, um, there are appraisers uh, who apply. And um, we, of course, we have, to, we have them to go through the same training process, which include, you know, taking the online class, taking the exam, um, and uh, do the test scan, um, and uh, so so we don't we don't really have a preference um, as long as you pass the test, uh, as long as you show good professionalism in you know you can in data collection. Um, we don't we don't um, we don't we don't have any preference. I would double down on that. We we think the appraiser skill set is is good for property data collection. Um, you know, today when appraisal volume is low, um, certainly we would encourage appraisers to do uh, property data collection and see what it's about. I think you'll find that it's as robust or more robust than any property inspection that uh, we do as appraisers. Um, so it's it's very comprehensive, um, but we we think that the appraiser skill set is is made for this. Now, in a time that we ran two years ago when appraisal volume was so high, uh, it may not make a whole lot of sense for appraisers to do it. That's why we want uh, you know. Uh, another population of folks out there trained to do property data collection. Gary and Carl, do you guys have any, do you guys see any questions that you would like to answer? So I see a good one. Um, if I live aboard, if I live abroad for six months, can I do PDC and value acceptance for my geographical competency area, um, having a valid license insurance. Oh, actually, I think this is saying, this is asking if I, do I need to have a uh, geographical competence um, to do PDR, PDC? Mm, this one, I, I think the answer is no. Um, so that's any comment on that? Geographic competence, competency to do the property data collection? Yeah, I think the, the audience was asking if I move around in the U.S., can I accept PDC assignments everywhere? Yes. Yeah, you can. We don't have anything that restricts that. I've seen a lot of questions come up around training. Um, we do not prescribe training. Uh, we do not have a prescribed training program for property data collectors. Um, we do work with our vendors, uh, as I mentioned, to review property data collections and provide them feedback. We have reviewed all of the vendors that that participate in our program. We have reviewed their training programs just to be aware of what's being shown out there. And, and we think the training programs that we've seen are pretty comprehensive. I mean, it's the the mobile, the mobile the technology that's been developed out there is pretty, um, pretty straightforward. I mean, it's going through a web form on a phone and filling out data as you're walking through a property. So um, we've, We've been happy with the quality of data that we see coming in through the process. So I see a good one. So this this one is: Will Astrum product be able to determine the depreciation and quality 
Will we be able to look under the rug that is showing a hardware floor that needs repair? Where you need to be able to zoom in on possible mold and uh, on the bathroom ceiling? Would it be you will be would it be able to relay that animal urine smell through the product? So I think this this person is asking that you know even though you have a 3D scan, would you be able to look under the rug? Um, would you be able to zoom in a mold? Um, would you be able to you know like detect smell? Right, and I think you know even though 3D scan do, does a lot, um, but at the end of the day, you know look, we also need uh, the person going on site to report the things that we cannot see in the scan. Right, so you know look under the rug that's showing the hardwood floor. Yes, you know if it's possible for them to lift it, they will lift it. But similar to appraisers that, do, that don't move furniture, right? If there's things behind the furniture um, that, you know, it, it's, and if you, the furniture cannot be moved, then we, 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 we including, you know, data collector and appraiser would not move it, right? And um, in, regarding smell, we do have questions um, that's in our data form and asking data collector to comment any smell or noise. Um, so uh, so we, we do rely on data collector for for that and when we see like trash or when we see things that can cause that would, that would um that would cause potentially smell then we will call the data collector and ask them to say hey was there any smell like what what do you think we'll review the scans present say hey what do you think that was um same thing with mold right like when we see like these days the phone camera has really high resolution and you can really zoom in and see like um just slight dampness of the of the wall right and again we'll call the data collector uh, sometimes we'll call the homeowner to ask them to comment uh, on a specific part of the home. So I would say it's a very collaborative process between the data collector, um, the QC using the technology, and uh, and the homeowner as well. I've seen some questions around, you know, do the GSCs have any expectations or analysis regarding the anticipated market share of each valuation option over the next few years? I, I would. Candidly, we don't. Um, we most loans that come to Fannie Mae today get receive an, an appraisal option, and that's gonna it's gonna be that way in the future. Uh, these these alternative options that we're talking about here are relatively small volume. Will those increase in a high volume uh, market? Sure. Um, you know, these, these types of products are, are geared more towards uh, refinance transactions. We're obviously in a low fee refinance market. Uh, but, you know, two years ago, our, our traditional appraisal waiver uh, offering was, you know, really high. It was 40%. Um, but that's when there were 800,000 plus appraisals, you know, coming through the UCDP on a monthly basis. And appraisal turn times were two to three weeks, four weeks in some markets. So, um in times like that, I would expect, uh, you know, alternatives to increase. Um, but, you know, today and, and it's in the, for, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be relatively low percentage. And there's been some misconception out there that, you know, we're Fannie Mae is, is trying to, you know, get rid of appra retire appraisals or get rid of appraisers. We, that, couldn't be, uh, that couldn't be any more false. Uh, we just spent jointly with with Freddie Mac at the, at the direction of our regulator, uh, the last five years and countless millions of dollars building the next UAD uh, for appraisers. So, um, you know, our intention is certainly not uh, to get rid of appraisers. So I see somebody asked me to comment on the classes on training um, that, you know, to expand on the class and training that uh, a PDC data collector has to take. So. Um, it's a, a two hour long course. Uh, it was created by Josh Wallet. Uh, if you don't know Josh Wallet, uh, Josh Wallet is, is the president of National Association of Appraisers. So Josh created a, a two hour long course and there's a series of exams that data collector must take. And uh, only if they pass, they can obtain a certificate and then they will have to present a certificate to us um, before we can use them. So that's our training process. And one of the things I want a question that I saw and several comments and just wanting to add a little bit on um, to what was said already with the, what does this mean for a traditional appraiser is the goal to phase out appraisers. And we're seeing a lot of those. And I would just challenge um, appraisers to look at this in a little bit of a different way, uh, especially, you know, from where we sit. 
this isn't, and, and I, you know, Fanny has said the same thing. This isn't about um, getting rid of appraisers. This is about those times in the last several years that we would sit on calls with appraisers who would say, I don't care if you pay me $3,000, I don't have the time to complete this. And we have lenders that have six weeks out, you know, timing that appraisers are quoting them because they're so backed up and can't possibly work anymore. Um, we all have to be reasonable and on board with the fact that we've got to have a different solution for that. That's not to move appraisers out. That's to expand this workforce for something that will allow us um, in specific instances to use an additional um, expanded workforce to help us um, to get that confidence and get what is needed to close that loan out. And meanwhile, keep appraisers doing exactly what they're doing in the lower volume, as they said before, you, you, we would encourage you to check it out, check it out, what it looks like to complete some of those. And then when it's crazy busy, that might not be what you want to do. And, and we expand this out and have more access, um, you know, to everybody to help everybody in this process, get things done the way that we all want to get them done. So just challenging the thinking a little bit there um, that this isn't about moving anybody out of a job. It's really, really to try to make this process work well for everybody involved. I saw a question um, go by a second ago that asked, um, you know, can a agent who listed the property, uh, listed the house, do the data collection? Answer is no. Our direction on that is the, the, the uh, data collector cannot be an interested party to the transaction. And in, in our, our UPD that I mentioned, our joint initiative with Freddie Mac, uh, we, and when that launches uh, December the 1st, there is a uh, data collector attestation where they will attest that they're not an interested party to the transaction. So I see, uh, I see a couple questions about uh, NZ standards um, and specifically asking how Astrium is able to measure the property. So I think there are, you know, this is a good question. Um, so the technology um, does a, is able to generate dimensions in the property um, and uh, using, including uh, the ceiling height. Right. So uh, the flow plan operation team, the flow plan QC team will go into uh, a duty scan and measure the ceiling height. And they will follow the NC standard. Right. Um, and uh, they will also look at um, the uh, heating, cooling situation. Um, and they will also look at the quality of the finishing. Um, they also go outside and walk around to see if there's earth contact off the, 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 the basement. Um, uh, so that's you know to answer the question on how and uh, how NZ um, is played uh, as a uh, as a role in uh, the inspection base waiver. Um, so one of the questions that just came through, um, like several of them, just about how appraisers could get signed up to do this work, haven't really seen opportunities in their market. Um, as well as what would this look like if I had my assistant doing these and then if it required a hybrid, I could do the hybrid. Um, absolutely would encourage that. I think, um, you know, Eric can speak to um, the different ways that you're able to just um, sign up with as a data collector. Um, I know he spoke to a little bit before just regarding um, the testing that would take place and you know the the items that you would have to um, complete to do that but i think you know thinking outside the box here at loving the idea of an assistant in your office that um perhaps could be doing these um you know and, and signing up to do these and then you taking on any of the hybrids that may come from that um i think it's a great idea Um, I saw one question asking, uh, do the 
property data collector uh, need to have background check? Um, the answer is yes. Um, both GSE require uh, the property data collector to have regular background check. Um, so we do check them periodically, um, at least annually, and um, before we, we send them back out in the field. There's a question I saw asking what form uh, using on this. It's, it's not a form. Um, so the vendors that have, uh, and when I say vendors, I'm talking about uh, AMCs. Uh, they have either partnered with a technology provider or built uh, an application themselves. And it's typically a mobile application. Uh, and it would have, it would, it would literally walk the data collector through, uh, through the process. So what kind of floors are present, what kind of walls are present, um, would prompt you to take photos. So it's, uh, it's not a form. Um, it's in a digital format, uh, and it comes through our API in that way. Now, what Eric uh, talked about earlier is, is outputting that data collection on a PDF. Um, we've certainly seen some vendors do that, where the data collection is just, just output on a PDF so someone can review it and take a look at it. Um, but it's not necessarily on a form um, like a 1004 appraisal form. So I see a couple of questions asking what this means to appraiser, right? How is this benefiting then? So I will, I will challenge you to broaden your uh, imagination a little bit, right? Like we're at a historical high interest rate, but as long as, as soon as rate going back to normal, everybody's going to be really busy and productivity is going to be key. Um, what if, you know, all on, on your standard forms, what if all this data pre-populated right i think the new uad uh, correcting that was wrong but the, i think the uad does have a lot of similarity with uh the, the the property data collection right so i think the power of these technology is having those data floor plan pre-populated on those form and appraisers don't have to go out they, they would just you know sit at home look at all this data coming in and really just you know use um um, the, the comms and uh, their research to complete the assignment. Um, I, I, and then traditionally, they might be able to do one to two appraisal a day, including having to drive around. But with all these data pre-populated served to you on, you know, when you're at home on at your desk, you may be able to do six to eight a day and, you know, end up making more, right? So that's, that's what I, I think, you know, appraisal monetization to appraisers. I've seen some questions around how long does it take to complete a PDR? Um, I think that varies technology by technology and, you know, the technology that's used. Um, I think we've, you know, we've seen some property data collections that are completed in, you know, 30 minutes and some take longer, just like on an appraisal inspection. Some, some take uh, an hour or more. I don't know, Eric, if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, it depends on the, the quality of the home and the size. But I would say our process, um, and a lot of people have are asking me uh, in the chat this, um, how do you obtain the duty dollhouse and the, the floor plan, right? So um, as I had mentioned earlier in the call, maybe I went too fast, but um, Astrum was um, was a software company that helped real estate agents create a duty dollhouse. And during COVID, we helped them put those uh, duty virtual tours on MLS and the uh, consumer portals like Zillow and Realtor.com. And the next step that when we found out about GSC inspection-based waivers is we thought that why don't we send um, our users um, to go in there and create those 3D floor plan and, and dollhouse and, uh, and then have them do inspections as well on top of that. So our process involved, you know, like um, a user uh, with our tripod, put their phone on a tripod, going to, um, every room and do one scan, uh, one scan about 20 seconds, one scan per room, one scan per hallway, um, one scan um, per uh, uh, ex per face of the exterior of the property. So four scans total. Um, that would just give us enough information about, you know, basically have access to all corners uh, of the house and we capture um, the photos that are needed. If we see, as I have demonstrated, um, just now, like if you need a photo of the view, you can go to the front yard and capture, uh, set an angle and capture a view that you want to capture. 
So the process it's uh, for us is a little different from uh, the process of the you know like the inspection the two D company who probably requires a lot more photos. Um, I think the average photo is about fifty to eighty. Um, that's the number that we 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 capture from the scans. So I would say our time the time it takes is about like 20, 25 minutes to do the scans and an additional ten minutes uh, fifteen minutes uh, to do the inspection. Uh, mostly focusing on upgrade and uh, deficiencies. Um, because for all the feature related uh, questions that we are able to use the scan and have our QC person um, to, to capture them uh, on the scan. I've seen some questions around um, how an appraiser would get signed up um, to do these property data collections. Uh, one, you can reach out to Carrie Ann Brown and her team. Um, certainly get you going through the process to do that. We do have a uh, published list on our website of vendors that have gone through our process and have connected to our uh, API and are able to de deliver the property data collection. So you could, you could go to that list and um, contact the vendors that uh, are on that approved list. And um, if you would like to sign up to be a, a property data collector, you can just go on our website, um, astroom.com and we just, we're always recruiting. Team, I wish um, I could answer questions, but I don't see anything here for lenders. <laughs> Very lot of appraisers on here. My, my two cents I want to add into this real quick uh, is uh, the fact that if there are any lenders on there, the most important part is the partnership with your uh, AMCs and Fannie Mae. So you can get down to, uh, you know, figuring out your policies and procedures. There's a lot of talk about the pictures that were taken. And Justin had a great point. Some of these pictures that are taken on these PDC, and I've seen a ton of PDC reports, they're more comprehensive than you're going to see on an appraisal. Uh, so our underwriters, who are veteran underwriters, they're very comfortable reviewing, looking, looking at um, the uh, pictures, determining whether something does actually need repair or if it's simply just deferred maintenance. And if we need updates, we go back to our AMC, they help us out. Uh, you know, they'll get more information, updates on the report. So... Uh, so far, it's it's worked uh, very well for us. So I think the, the 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 biggest advantage here we have is if you have a scan, then you can capture a lot of missing photos from a scan, right? It, and um, it also um, it prevents uh, the worst outcome, which is having somebody to go back out. Because when you have somebody to go back out, it adds at least one day of delay. And then you have to call the borrowers and you have to trouble them to, to get access again. So I think that it's uh, it really is why uh, a lot of AMCs and lenders chose to partner with us, um, because you know we we have a great um, experience where you just go in, get out, and you don't have to get back. And I think that's that's really important for lenders. Uh, one final right. question, and then I'll, Eric, I'll let you close it out. But I've seen a couple of questions around appraiser liability and using the property data collection um, in, in a hybrid appraisal. And, and I would just direct you to uh, limited, limited, limited condition number three. Uh, it starts out the appraiser is relied on data provided by third parties. It finishes with uh, the last sentence in that paragraph, limiting condition number three. The appraiser makes no guarantees expressed or implied regarding the accuracy of this data. So we were we were thoughtful when we when we created the desktop in the hybrid form to include uh, that language for the appraiser. Um, so that they're, uh, you know, they have that out on the liability of the data. So um, we, even though we don't have a lot of uh, lenders on uh, asking questions, but I have a look at attendee lists. Uh, they, they are quite a bit of a lender presence. Okay, Carl, um, is there anything before we end here? Is there anything that you want to, um, you know, talk about, um, you know, to your uh, lender peers? Uh, yeah, don't be afraid of the product. Um, you're going to realize that once you start using it and you start reviewing a couple of these PDCs, and again, we use it both on the Fannie and Freddie side. Oops, I said Freddie. I'm sorry, Justin. Um, <laughs> but on the on both sides, and uh, believe me, they're here to help us. They're here to help us to close loans faster and more efficiently. Uh, so it's just getting over that hurdle of being afraid of the PDC, who has liability, who doesn't, 
you know what the the empirical data that, that is presented on those reports is simple you know square footage room count uh you know and and justin made a great point whether you do a full appraisal or look at a pdc you still have to review the pictures and look at everything so the qc process is really no different it's almost a little bit easier because like justin said i don't have to worry about the value and the value at the end of the day the value is this but my score rating from fanny is a four now i got to get a desk review and i got to do more stuff so you know that that really takes it out of the out of the game and it makes our jobs a little bit easier justin any last closing word for lenders no thank you all very much if you uh, have any questions uh feel free to reach out jim well, thank you guys for joining us. I know we had we didn't answer everyone's questions. We had over 350 questions. There was a lot to take care of. I know you guys got to as many as of, of them as you could. We do have a um, pop-up for anyone that does want to see um, a little bit more about this and how it works. Uh, you can click this link and watch the keynote from Eric at, or the his presentation at Valuation Expo. Um, but we really appreciate all the speakers for being here and everyone for joining us. I think it was a great webinar and very informative. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.